One of the best things I love about homeschooling is the fact that I get to be the school administrator. I get to make the decisions about how school works in my home and for my kids and what I want them to learn and what I don't want them to learn. So all that said, uh, we took a field trip recently and it was something that we wanted to do for a while and it was just a matter of finding the time. And so some neighbors were gonna be going to the Crater of Diamonds State Park, Crater of Diamonds. And a lot of you guys have been there. I've seen the comments before recommending that we should go. And I know it's something that's very popular in, in our state. So um, a lot, it's a, it's a very, very nice state park. Okay. We went there with dreams of fame and fortune that we were going to find the world's largest diamond ever and be super filthy rich. <laughs> And, you know, we come away with our, you know, dreams dashed. <laughs> so I, I made a comment on Patreon. I said, is this the field of dreams or the field where dreams go to die? Um, and, and I made the point as we were leaving because we didn't find any diamonds. I'll just get to that right now. But we did find a lot of great information. It was fun. It was a lot of hard work. We were super sore the next day. Um, and my kids, when we got home that night, we they slept. I mean, we went to bed early. It's a lot of work, okay? A lot of hard work and for very little reward. And it was, it's hard. It's just hard to find diamonds. Not to mention the fact that things have been mined for like the last hundred years. So there's not a lot out there. Yes, there are some people who walk away and they get really extremely, I don't like the word lucky, blessed. And they find something amazing and then they get to take it home and, you know, it makes the news. And there's been a number of, in the last couple of years, of really nice finds out there. Oh, as well as over the year. I think the largest, uh, uh, I mean, this is really the only diamond mine in North America. And I think the the biggest diamond was found was like 40, 40 carats, something like that. Anyway, pretty big. All of that to say, it taught a very valuable lesson, you know, when it comes to history. And you read about, you know, the, the gold rush in the 1840s and, and some of the, you know, the Klondike gold rush, rush, you know, we hear about these things in some of our lessons and and uh, these people rushed in to try to make their fame and fortune, and they basically squandered everything for nothing. They, they, they spent every last dime they had for equipment and to get to these places only to, to come away empty-handed and, and ruined. And uh, it was a lot of energy going into this place. You know, we're, we're feeling it, and we're like, yeah, we're going to find some diamonds, and I will, we have this strategy. We're going to dig deep holes, and we're going to all this stuff. And, and uh, by the time you're leaving, it's like, yeah, I didn't get anything. <laughs> We did come. We did find some nice rocks, and uh, Joshua, my oldest, did find uh, a really nice clear garnet. It was really small, but it was really clear and it was really, it was really nice looking garnet. And so uh, that was cool. And I found some really cool quartz pieces and some other stuff. But all that to say, a um, lot of history here. The guy who originally uh, owned this sold it for um, like thirty six thousand dollars back in the day, um, and. Uh, uh, back in the 1800s or early 1900s, I'm not sure which. And uh, yeah, I think it was early 1900s. He owned a pig farm there and he saw a rock on, sitting on the dirt that was like shining back at him more than all the other rocks he'd seen. And he picked it up and he's like, huh. And so he's like, I think that might be something different. And so he wants to take it to town. And on his way to town, walking off his property, he sees another one. And he picks that up and he takes them both to the bank and the bank has them sent away, off, send them off. And they came back as certified, yes, these are diamonds. It was a yellow diamond and a white diamond. And so at that point, the race was on to sell his farm and to improve his life. And he did. So all that to say, um, it was a lot of great time, good, good fun, you know, hard work. I met a couple of people out there and, um, and the people we were met with met some interesting folks too. There are people out there, who, it's their job to go out there every day and dig for diamonds and they find diamonds and they make money. And there's a lot of people who, this is like a really big hobby for them. They come out several times a year. There was a guy who comes out from Virginia, I believe. And he, he comes out three times a year and every time he comes, he stays for two weeks at a time. And all he does is search for diamonds, and he's made, since he started this, over $300,000 over the time he's been, I don't know how many years he's been doing it, but he's made over $300,000. It's a hobby for him, okay? And so he, I'll tell you where he searches. He searches in the washouts. So they have these little troughs, like full of water that people can 
shake and do all their stuff and, and look for diamonds out of. And they're like me. We had, you know, they have no clue what they're doing. I have, I had no clue what I was doing out there. <laughs> I've, I've panned for gold. We've, we've ordered pay dirt here before for the kids, you know, and, um, Gold is pretty easy to find. I mean, it stands out, okay? It's not that hard to work a pan, you know, to learn how to do that. And gold, you can't miss it. But you could be looking right at a diamond and not know what you're looking at, in my opinion. Um, maybe we threw tons of diamonds out. And that's exactly what happens because this guy, he searches all the washouts. Because all these people are at these water troughs, do whatever they want to do, you know, rinsing all, this, all these rocks, and they're sending all these diamonds right down the drain. <laughs> Because they don't know what they're doing. And this guy comes out and searches all the washouts. And he finds, he finds diamonds every day when he's out there. He, you know, he, he takes them, but he gets basically all of this concentrate material and takes it back and to his hotel or makes it to wherever he's going or wherever he's going back home in Virginia. And he sorts out all the diamonds afterwards. But he gets this concentrated material from all the stuff people wash out and takes it home. And he's making good money. And there's a number of people like that. There was another guy I met out there and uh he's found over 100 diamonds throughout the years it's more of a hobby for him when i met him he was kind of like you know moaning about his aching back and i said you know i, I made a comment i don't remember what i said but he said yeah i just got done with surgery you know eight weeks ago and i said well your doctor would be really upset if he knew you were out here ruining all that hard work he did for your back and he's like oh f him <laughs> i don't care i'm having fun so anyway he's out there and he's he's found over 100 diamonds in the course of he's been doing this as a hobby, and he says, I he, he said, I've never found gold out here until today. I said, Really? And he said, Yeah. And he pulled out this gold ring. He says, I found this in the dirt today, about a foot down, and I don't know how long it's been out here. And sure enough, he, he let me look at it, and it was marked 14K, and it had six rows, six rows of tiny diamonds in the in the ring, tiny little diamonds. He's like, This is the most diamonds I've ever found out here. <laughs> <laughs> he found 48 diamonds in one day uh, in a gold ring he had, he had dug up. So it was kind of interesting. But yeah, he, he's he been out here a lot and he knows where he, and I went over and started digging where he was digging because he was finished and he was heading off to the water place to, to you know, rinse all of his you know, concentrate and everything. And so I started digging, but I didn't find any diamonds. Or maybe I did and I didn't know what I was looking at and I just threw it down the drain like everybody else. So um, that's, it, it was a good time. It was a fun time. I don't know if I'd ever go back. It was like a four-hour trip down there and a four-hour trip back. We did it all in one day, and uh, we were tired. I mean, it was a lot of hard work, and my hands are still not recovered. My hands were swollen because I was carrying heavy buckets of water to the place we were digging so that we could rinse our stuff out. And it was nice. I, th I told my kids if I went back, and a lot of you guys have been there, so you can leave comments but, and let me know what you think. But and, and some of you guys are probably going to have great stories like I did coming out of that place because you meet interesting people, right? And I, I love to talk to people, right? So um, I told them, I said, you know, I think next time if I ever went back, I'd like to walk some of the trails because they have trails around there and they have different historical um, places that, you know, for, were part of the old farm back in the day and the, the old mining shaft and things like that. I would like to explore some of that stuff. I think it would be neat. But I think when you first get there the first time, um, you just – you just want to get in there and find your fame and fortune. That's all. It's all. It's all in your mind at that point. You're, you have gold fever, but it's diamond fever, you know. But uh, I don't know. Leave a comment. There, there's a lot of people walking around, and I, I remember I asked one one woman. She she had all this gear on her, and I'm like, so you know what you're doing? You, you, do you do this on a daily basis? And she's like, no, this is my first time out here. But she looked like a pro to me. Um, I, I was not, I didn't have all that gear. I just bought a few things that I had and, and we, we did our best. We had some clear, uh, classifiers, uh, that you can, they, they rent a lot of stuff, but they put really high prices on, um, what's it called? Uh, what's that called when they charge you so much money and then they give you most of it back? I can't, it's, I'm having a brain fart, but you guys probably know. Anyway, um, the rental stuff, they have lots of rental stuff out there. And there, and there's places all in town that have all kinds of rental packages you can, you can buy. And so all that, it, it, it's an amazing, it's a tourist town and it's, it's a lot of fun. Everything when you go through the town is named Diamond, the Diamond Inn, the Diamond Bank, the, the, everything's named Diamond. A lot of great fun. If you have never been there, I highly recommend it. And uh, go seek your fame and fortune, and maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll find it. I don't know, uh, but we, we it was a good it was a good history lesson 
you know, to learn the dashed dreams of the miners back in the, the 1840s gold rush of California and how most of them came to nothing for all their effort. So I don't know, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, guys. Hey, check out our merchandise over at teespring.com. You can find all of my best-selling shirts. Stupid should hurt. Because if we had more hurt in this world, we'd have an awful lot less stupid. And uh, you can find also this one, too. If you're a homeschool dad like me, you can find it. Uh, link in the description below over at teespring.com. All right, guys. See you next time the Homestead. Bye. Have you ever gone to a health food store and seen all those small bottles of probiotics in your cooler section? Man, can they be pricey. Are you really getting all you need to improve your gut health from those expensive bottles? How viable are they? Most of those products claim to give you between 8 and 15 strains of gut-healthy healing bacteria. Think of each strain of bacteria as a different factory in your gut. Each factory is responsible for breaking down that food in its own way. The more factories you have, the more the food is broken down and the easier the food is absorbed and digested by the body. A 2018 study published by the National Library of Medicine shows that one fermented head of cabbage can produce up to 114 strains of beneficial bacteria. That's a lot more food factories than you're getting from that expensive pill bottle. And that's just cabbage. Imagine the probiotics when you add garlic, onions, pepper, and more to that ferment. PerfectPickler.com and its home fermentation kits provide you with everything you need to get started making your own gut-healthy food factories from the comfort of your own kitchen. PerfectPickler.com even provides a jam-packed recipe book with many of our kits. Visit PerfectPickler.com and start fermenting your own veggies to begin your journey to better gut health. That's PerfectPickler.com. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>